Good afternoon and uh, welcome to another of the uh, spaces of webinars we've been presenting following the study day we did earlier in the year, which is going through uh, driving towards um, zero carbon. Um, I'm Steve Rufus, uh, the Vice President of Spaces and uh, work for Dorset Council. Um, as we are saying, that we've, got a, we've had a series of seminars um, following on from the study day, and the one today is from SAV Systems um, on the Energy Raven, the Building Carbon Management Tool. Uh, today we've got uh, Lars Fabricius, uh, the Managing Director uh, of SAV Systems, and also we've got uh, Jonathan Hunter-Hill, who is the uh, sort of a, one, one of the... Um, one of the uh, service managers uh, with a lot of interest in educate on the education side. So what we'll do at the moment, uh, we'll start the presentation. Just had a quick question. If people want copies of the slides, is that something we can do? If not, we can, uh, so just to save people now if they've got to take notes on that. Um, Yes, we can. That's not a problem. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Um, at the end of the presentation, there will be a poll just so you can get the sort of feedback on the to get a better idea of the type of presentations you like to see. And also, I will uh, go through with some details of some uh, up and coming other webinars we've got during October. So uh, without any further ado, if I hand over to Lars to uh, start the presentation. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, th this is sort of explaining about Energy Raven, but it's also a wider sort of what we are experiencing in the UK and, and why we think this is this could be of interest to everyone. But but essentially, we created a sister company to SAV called energy raven and and the purpose of of the company is to to essentially help building owners get to net zero everyone talks about net zero what does it mean but this is what we think it should mean and um this is a, a picture some some years ago outside our offices and so forth but i think it, it's 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 a it sets the scene a little bit that the, the cars we're all used to driving our cars we get into our own cars we can see how much energy we consume as we drive along, we, we stop the car, we park it, we turn it off. So we're in control. We know how much petrol we use and so forth. The challenge with buildings is that the buildings, who's controlling the buildings? Who's controlling the energy consumption? The owners of the buildings are paying the bills, but the people who are occupying it, how are they, if you like, driving the buildings? And these buildings keep using energy in hours, out of hours, and so forth. So it's, it's an incredible challenge that a car is all geared, so we all feel in control. But, but I think a general comment is I don't think many building owners are in control of their energy. And I think that's, to a certain extent, the nub of the challenge we're all facing. You can change your business plan, you can change the price of your products, you can change the things you do, but the most difficult thing to change is the culture. But at the same time, the culture is also the most important thing for an organization. So, so how do we do this? But what we can see, and I am, I am Danish, so I, I have a, a close feeling for what goes on in Denmark. I also grew up in England, so I'm, a, I'm like a Danglish. I do live between the two worlds. And so I'm seeing where things are in Denmark, and I'm seeing where things are in the UK. And, and it's a culture change that has to happen. That, that's, that's what's... I think is 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 certainly our view on the world, and 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 this is interesting. As I said, this is from Forbes, but basically Forbes are then saying, you know, there are three bubbles, if you like. There is the leadership, the the, the then you've got the the management tools, and then you've got the, the 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 base of the building. And so they're talking about how to change the culture of organizations. So inspiration could be one. So you could say inspiration could be coming from um, net zero, net zero, that's why we should be doing things. Then, then you could say, well, from the other end, you, you talk about power tools, you talk about coercion, punishment. The punishment, the intimidation that, that you know, our whole society has experienced is actually energy costs. So what you could say is that there is a clarity on leadership. There is also a clarity that there is, a, there is also a stick. So there's a carrot, there's a stick. But, but, but the question is, 
how do we manage that? And I think that's what everyone is grappling with. But what's interesting from the Forbes sort of way of looking at the world, you can see there are, you know, anyone that wants the copies of the presentation, you could see this is something I found on the internet, but it's about information, managing information, uh, uh, control systems, measurement systems, promotion systems, education, all of these points have got to be touched if we're going to change culture. And culture is the issue, even though on the face of it, it's a technical question, energy and what we're doing. Net zero, we, we hear the word all the time and so forth. And net zero seems to mean different things to diff different people and so forth. You know, we, have, we, see, we speak to a lot of people and they're doing some, some things they feel as net zero and so forth. But the, the, in simple terms, what we would say is that Ultimately, net zero is obviously we, 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 we want to have a zero carbon footprint, but, but to get there, we start with focusing on energy waste. And, and why is that? Um, in Denmark, they use the expression a lot that, that, that renewables, they're calling the renewables the champagne of energy. And that's because there, there will always be scarce. People will say, well, we'll just build more windmills and so forth. But, but the amount of power we're going to need in society to replace the fossil fuels that we're using is so astronomical. So renewables will never be cheap. And therefore, we should be using them sparingly. And we shouldn't throw expensive renewables at inefficient buildings. That's, that's just not the way. And, and, and the more that we're sort of digging into this, that, 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 that sort of we are, we're looking at the performance of buildings, the, 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 the key metrics to sort of say how well is your building performing is, is, is the kilowatt consumption per square meter uh, over the year. And, and we are, we're seeing, there's specifically schools we were looking at recently where we're saying the school has a B rating. So you're saying it's only using up to 50 kilowatts uh, over the year. But, but then we find the original designs. The original designs were, were actually 135 kilowatts. So how you have an EPC rating of, of a B when the, the design was 135, and then the actual consumption is 261. So, so it's, 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 it's the metrics of saying how much is actually being used compared to what should be used is what we would say the, the, the key thing to, to focus on. And, and it's something we would yeah, call the, the energy performance gap. How does the energy performance gap come about? And, and you would say, well, let's imagine a building is designed for 100 kilowatts. It then gets sort of value, value sort of uh, engineered during the purchasing. So it's now at 110. Then the commissioning wasn't as good as it could have been. So then you're at 120. Then this operating, um, things weren't operated as, as was designed. And then, and then over a five-year period, all of a sudden, we've got a drift. And all of a sudden, we're using 200 kilowatts in the building that should only be using 100 kilowatts. And this energy performance drift, we're seeing it across the board. And, and, and closing that gap uh, uh, um, is the obvious thing. And, and what's exciting or interesting or whatever it's it's the same that's being said we saw the gla for example the gla are talking about it's it's the the performance gap the difference between the actual consumption of the building versus the theoretical Isri are saying the same thing more focused on the actual performance and i'm sure everyone listening in will all recognize that that things are not as they perhaps should be and so forth but how do we get them how do we close this gap and, and, and this diagram, I think, is, is a very, very good diagram, um, GLA. But, but you can see on the right-hand side, the BC, you need to be monitoring the whole process. But we do speak to, 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 to organizations who, who kick off decarbonizing their energy consumption. But, but really what this is saying is actually eliminate your energy wastage. So, so cut your, your energy saving and improve <coughs> the energy efficiency of your building before you start to decarbonize. But the key to do that is actually to be able to see what's going on. 
SAV, just a quick background and, and why SAV is, has launched, if you like, Energy Raven. We, we are suppliers of, of many low carbon technology products and so forth. So we understand this drift. We see it all the time. We, we know how it occurs and so forth. So it, it was more SAV, what do we do about it? Do we shrug our, our, our shoulders? Instead, we said, no, actually, what we should be thinking about is can we... Um, do something, but it's not an SAV activity. Uh, this Raven and helping clients is, is 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 more of a service. It's something very different to what, and hence we then created a separate separate sister company. And and to 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 manage this process, coming back to the organizational structure, what what we are seeing, we 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 looked around. Um, particularly in Denmark, to see what type of systems existed in Denmark to help building owners um, cut their energy consumption. And, and, and Denmark, you imagine, has been living with very high energy costs because of carbon taxes for decades. So, so th what's going on in the UK now, not due to carbon taxes, but energy costs and, and net zero, is, is, is a sort of an old hat for the Danes. So we were thinking, let's look and see what, what are they doing and is there something we could use there that we could then transfer? And, and as it happened, there is a, the one that we got recommended and we're now using as our platform is, is, a, is we're calling it My Energy Raven, but the company in Denmark is called Energy Data, but they have been focusing on helping businesses for over, over 20 years. And today they are 40 employees. They're monitoring uh, 8,000 buildings. So it's it's a it's a it's a it's a mature solution. The way their approach is and so forth, and their platform. It's 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 it hosts the information on behalf of the clients. Clients can then go on and obviously access and just get their data. But 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 we think this is really something the UK is is screaming for. And, and to give you an idea of the clients in Denmark, it's from the supermarkets to the local authorities. You can see Carlsberg is the name you'd recommend. Retailers, Denmark's National Bank, Denmark's or Copenhagen's University. So it's across the board. It's not just local authorities. It's, it's all organizations that have an energy consumption, but they have a very good pedigree in terms of having to work with, with a large uh, um, range of, of clients. And why Raven? They call energy data. We called it Raven. A little bit. I'm I'm a little bit of a sort of history buff. But there's also there is a there is a there is a meaning in it. And and I don't know how much you guys know the North mythology. But but Odin was the god of the gods. And 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 Odin sought wisdom always. And 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 the story is that Odin sacrificed an eye for more wisdom. But the interesting thing I think is that. He needed information. He needed to know what was going on in the world. But he didn't have, he used ravens to get the information. But he didn't have just one raven. He had two ravens. And so why two? Why not just raven, Odin with a raven? But the one raven was Mununin. And that was the raven of memory. And then the other raven is Huguenin, which was the raven of thought. And what we are experiencing when we do speak to, to local authorities and so forth, there's, there, there's plenty of data out there, but, but it's managing the data in a useful way. And that's where we would say there are data lakes or data mountains, but it's the thoughtfulness of how you use the data. That's what we think, and hence the name, the, the Energy Raven. Once you have a system, then you should then say, okay, we now have a system we, we, we now want to go in and go in and focus on, can we cut uh, a wasteful sort of save on energy as the first step? And, and, and what you would do is, this is these, are, these are actually details from, from schools, real life schools in Denmark. We've just changed the names to English names and so forth. So this is one local authority. And when they go in and look at their, their schools, you see, this is for a period, um, I can see, it's, I think it's for one year. But what, what you're showing here is the, 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 the kilowatt consumption per square meter of the, each school. But you can also see immediately, you can see which are the schools that they, they probably know which, what are the problems in the different schools. But it's just interesting, at, at, a, at a sort of a click of a button, you have a complete overview of what's going on 
in your buildings, then you can say, well, let's go in and, and look at in more detail. One of the features they've added, which, which I think is fantastic, this is, you can see in the bottom left, this is a, a grouping. I'm not quite sure what, what building type, but 57 buildings. And these 57 buildings have actually increased their <coughs> consumption by 450,000 pounds over the last, I think, year. It's last year. But what was interesting is that's not a good thing, but there were 25 of the 57 buildings that actually had 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 an expenditure of 720. So in, in effect, you had 32 buildings that were doing better than an average. And the average in this case is an industry average. So they are comparing your buildings within a portfolio against a Danish industry average. But therefore, there are 32 buildings that are doing better than the industry average for these types of buildings, but there are 25 that are doing worse. The other thing that I think is interesting to note is that if we look at the first figure, the 452,000, so they're using that much more energy. However, the carbon footprint actually got reduced. And that's something I think people were going to be surprised when they start to experience that their carbon footprint might be falling, but, but their energy costs could be increasing. So, so there's, but again, when you start looking at, then you need to analyze why is that is, there are probably good reasons for it, but something like this to help organizations manage their portfolio to identify where do you dedicate your resources? You can't be chasing uh, windmills everywhere. And, and, and it is structured like an accounting system. So, so one of the features, key feature I would say is that you then operate with budgets. You would say, well, that building was designed for such or it's our ambition is X or Y. But then you can introduce alarms so that you can say, if the consumption of that given building or, or, or uh, um, classroom or whatever you wish, then moves outside of given parameters within hours or outside of hours, anything like that, will then automatically send a, an alarm both to the, the, if you like, the financial team that are overseeing it, plus the facilities people on site. So it's really built up like an accounting system that you can then react on what's going on. And what's also a very nice feature I like is that they'll also put a value on something. So maybe some control valve is not operating or there's a leak somewhere, but they'll put a value. So here they're saying, it's St. Mary's, if you do not do anything on whatever the alarm is, it's going to cost you £1,200 over the next year. So they're putting a value on. So it's helping you sort of saying, what should we focus on? So it's all geared to, 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 to managing a larger portfolio of buildings and where do you react once you've got the information? But the screen on the left is an interesting one. It's, it's as you could probably see, it's, it's a 24 seven. Every little square is an hour within, within a week. And, and what this is used for is to, to, to sort of say, what is our energy consumption? Do we have any energy consumption under the radar that we shouldn't have? So here you could see at two o'clock Sunday night, the energy consumption in the building increase for whatever reason. So what is that? The standby electricity on some something. So it's telling you all the time there's there's something going on. So it's it's again this raven's eye view from above. You have a very good idea of your building or your whole portfolio, and then you can see the 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 the, the costs. Uh, split down on the right hand side. So how much of your standby is electricity? How much is heat? How much is water? And then there's also a value to it. So it's all the time geared to making it very quick to identify where things are drifting and then you can attack them. And here you can then go in and put in budgets and sort of say, well, this is the budgeted energy consumption for that building or, or that section of a building and so forth. And then, and then any reaction, if we go above that, you can then go in and define and say, well, then we want a, 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 a signal coming back and saying this, this drift somewhere in that building. So that was on the energy wastage and energy wastage can then be going further to, to you know, behavior and so forth. The next step uh, uh, is, is energy efficiency, and it becomes a little bit more technical. But, but, but the efficiency of the building services in, in that, that's, that we have. So 
this I think is, is a fantastic graph. What, what this is showing is that in a heating system, what you want is you want a heating system, an efficient heating system. You don't want the return temperature, the return water to come back at a high temperature. Ideally, and the rule of thumb they use in Denmark is you want to lose 30 degrees between your flow temperature and your return temperature on a system. Getting a low return temperature is, is key for your low carbon technologies, be them CHP, heat pumps, if you want to connect to a heat network. But this graph is what this is really showing is what is the return temperature? How good are we actually uh, uh, um, dissipating the heat as opposed to just pumping hot water around the building? So here you can see there's actually there's a, there's a curve. What they're saying is it's very difficult to lose 30 degrees across your heating system in the summertime, which makes sense. But then in the wintertime, they're, they're saying you should be able to get higher numbers. But you can see the little bells are basically saying that, that even though we sat a low barrier for, let's say, July, we actually had less cooling or less heat dissipation than we expected. Maybe the water flow is too high. So they're using alarms to react and say, that curve that we put in, we feel is a fair curve, but it, it then gives a reaction that then, then, then the, the site uh, uh, managers can react to, but also the, the financial teams can be involved in, and then they can appreciate uh, what's going on in the building. Here is, a, is, is, is something I, th you know, I think is interesting to see, that, that, that again, it's graphs. This is for a school building, and, and, and the, the green line, you can see that in the, in the summer months, the green line, if we start over on the left-hand side, the green is the middle. Then we can see the green line as it goes up. That's the energy usage of the building. And it makes sense that it, it spikes in December. It spikes again in, let's say, the end of February here. But something odd happened in November, December. And what you could say is the heat still got transferred. But somehow someone must have opened a bypass in the building. Because what happened was that the return temperature, the, 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 the differential, the delta T, crash it went from being it should have been close to 30 degrees but it actually fell down to eight degrees so someone must have opened some bypass somewhere that undermined the system but what is interesting is no one would have noticed it because the heating kept on going but what happened to then happened was if we look at the blue line at the bottom left that's the bottom line it went along and then it had to spike. So what's happened here is then the pump has had to work very, very hard to, to compensate for the low delta T. And therefore, but you wouldn't have noticed it, but there's been an energy cost to that. And it could have also, it would have affected the return temperature to the system. You wouldn't have noticed it. No one would have noticed it, but, but an alarm would have picked up that there's something went wrong that should have been addressed. But how in a portfolio of 500 buildings or how many buildings you have, would you pick up on these things unless you had an energy accounting system? And here is a, is a sort of a, this, this is a care home building. Uh, um, but this is, this is the kind of graph you would want to see where you can see the, the flow temperature to the building throughout the year, the return temperatures. So very simple images, but there's so much information in this that it really puts the building owner in control of their energy. They're now finding out where is the energy going. And then we have the, the topic of, of green. So, so the, the real message is do steps, you need step one, you need a system to monitor and, 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 and see what you're using. You need to cut your energy costs, so diminish to minimize your energy performance gap. And only then does it start to make sense to focus on the renewables. And if we talk about renewables, you, you then obviously have the monitoring, so you could be monitoring the performance, you can have many different things. Though the future, you won't have a single single heat source. It's going to be a, a mixture, CHP with heat pumps, electric boilers, thermal stores, and so forth. So you need to be monitoring the efficiency. How well is your heat pump operating? What is the COP? Because maybe there's something that's gone wrong on that. So again, information. Information is power. How good is the COP? That information is absolutely critical. But you don't do this until you have a good energy center, but do the rest of the building first. And here you would then be able to see, okay, we now have a 
have a hybrid energy center, so we have a mixture of a boiler, a heat pump, and a CHP. How much is the heat pump operating versus the CHP? So you're also ensuring that they are orchestrating in the right way that, that's, that you would wish. As, as, a, as a sort of final thing on, on the reporting system, this is a standard. You would then be able to see for the whole building portfolio, what is the, the carbon footprint, scope one, two, and three. So all the time, just making it very, because you say, productive. I mean, that, that's, I think, knowing the Danish, the Danish mentality is very much a, a farming mentality, but, but keep it simple. And productivity is always automation and so forth. So you can see this whole approach is an extremely productive way that one person could actually be overseeing a huge portfolio once it's been built up. To create it is a challenge, but once it's there, you can, there's a holding position, there's an incredible productivity and energy saving and carbon saving tool. Just a sort of examples here we have, this is E-Dale, so this was, which means Oakdale uh, um, Council in Denmark. They didn't have an overview of their consumption. They, they had excessive consumption. They had lots of water damage in the building and, and, and therefore introducing this. So, but it's not a lot. If you think about it, it's 100 buildings, but they only needed 600 meters. And then they had a complete overview what's going on in the building. So it's not like you need to measure everything. You can, with a few vital statistics, you can, you can get a very long way. And then, and then practice what you preach. We, we ourselves as an organization, we've got five buildings across the country. We then sort of said, well, let's, let's see how the Raven works in our own buildings. And then we discovered up in our Manchester office, we couldn't understand, you know, why were we using so much water? I mean, that does, you know, there's no, there's no showers going on and so forth. It's just an office. Then it turned out that one of the wash toilets or whatever in one of the rooms, there was a leak. And therefore, we didn't notice the leak, but the water was just going straight out through the sort of the drainage system. But then when we calculate, it was, it was a million liters a year under our noses that was just being consumed. And you think, well, you know, that's that's and then you can see we just corrected that and then and then saving that. And and I regret we had a problem in our Edinburgh office a few years ago where there was a water leak and it wasn't a leak, it was it was a leak, but it's one of the worst leaks because once you have these sort of it's not there's it more than a weep, but it was sort of drip. It was drip on the fourth floor. And so so when we came up there, the water had gone down through the whole building, but you didn't notice it until it got, but the amount of damage, had we had something like this in that building, we would have noticed some, why are we using water in the middle of the night, Sunday night, there's something wrong. But but that's the kind of thing, and you can see E-Dale was saying, that's the kind of, this water damage, I'm sure all of you know, the cost of water damage is, 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 uh, is very high. And then, and then the same thing was going on. Again, it was the Manchester office. There was something else tricky going on. We couldn't figure out. And then we could see there was some electrical load out of ours, but it didn't make any sense. We couldn't. Then we checked our computer room. We checked the plant room. No, things weren't running. Then it turned out a few years ago, we'd, we'd installed a, an electrical underfloor matting in the basement. So anyone came visiting, they could sit, and then they had warm feet type of thing. But that had never been turned off. And, and it turned out that, that that was just running, but you wouldn't notice it when it's warm, but the weather's warm. So how would you notice that? It, and it was a small kilowatt that was running. You see, it's 20 kilowatts a day. So you wouldn't notice it, but it was a bleed. And it was a bleed now with the new energy costs. That, that So when we then charted up these numbers and sort of see what's actually then happened, let me just go back there, we ended up sort of realizing using the raven and, and and actually just in in the manchester office it's it saved us 10 grand over the next three years for for an investment in the monitoring for which was less than so it's a two-month payback and then that 10 grand if this then identifies other things over the next three years then that we could add to the so the payback relative to the investment and the management time it's 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 not it's not a it's not a yeah, it's, it's, it needs to be done. Otherwise, how, how are you going to get to net zero? 
essentially the raven the, the whole philosophy and as i would say it's very common in denmark it's it's more sharing information because it's it's helping through knowledge and therefore what we've done is we we've taken danish publications some of them might be 15 20 years old but there are a lot of things that were made in denmark to help building owners understand so it's it's it is semi technical but it's more than anything is trying to explain what are the things that they should be uh, looking at and the the thing that we're saying is it's the the senior management the chief executives of local authorities they also need to have a certain energy savvy it's not the energy manager of a of a big portfolio alone cannot win the war on carbon it's it it is a it's an organizational change and so forth but we are adding a lot of literature uh, uh, so people can learn from that and then identify what should they be worrying about and and to finish off because this is how you know i've, I've covered many points so so questions and so forth be really but what we are basically saying to 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 um to everyone we're engaging with is is that that the net zero this whole process it's it's a voyage and it's a culture change that that has to happen it's a cultural process that that then starts to identify so what we're saying is instead of getting stuck in with my energy raven on a whole building portfolio what we are proposing is that one kick starts with with seven seven similar type buildings and then just say start with seven buildings it's going to be self financing because the savings energy savings will pay amply for the monitoring of that but but starting seven starts a process within organizations and if they want to speed it up they can speed up the process but but culture change and learning is is a it's a marathon it's not a sprint and and so what we are really encouraging is if if any of you guys don't already have a process similar to the one that I've highlighted then 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 we're very happy to engage but but start with seven buildings similar type buildings and say what information do you have how can we take it forward and so forth but it's more about really almost help for for helping your organizations move along this this cultural voyage journey whatever you want to call it but that's that's of yeah i've covered what i have to say so so lots of time for questions if there are any questions okay lars thank you for that uh, introduction onto the energy raven uh, i like the um the analogy with uh with um thor's ravens thinking you've got uh, you've got um uh, mooning in which is the memory which is i presume thinking the data on that and it's hooking in we need a thought what you do with that data and finding out so i do like the analogy and i see how that links nicely into the name the, the branding works yeah. yes yeah yeah i can see it so yeah. yes um again if there's any questions can you know if people still feel feel free to put them into the uh into the chat there but i've got a couple to start with if that's okay lars just to go through on that one to, to kick off um how, how does your system link in with existing metering and BMS systems? Does it does it sit on top of it, and how and how does that connect into what what people have already? Yeah, that, very good question. What what you could say is that energy data had to 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 work. Their 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 ability is 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 managing the data. So if it's a BMS house, a BMS house will have information. Mm -hmm. So then having a transferred. So the whole thing is about uh, their ability to take uh, 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 information that already exists. So if you already have information, that's fantastic. And then we'll have it transferred in so that then it gets structured in that. So it's not like it's, 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 it's whatever data is available. That's how you would start. So mm -hmm. essentially the process you would want to do is to say, how many square meterage do we have in a given type building? What is our energy consumption to that building? And how detailed do we have that energy consumption? Mm -hmm. Is it, if it is only a monthly utility bill, that 
in itself gives you an idea of of the size of the energy performance gap. Because if you discover the building is using a lot more than a benchmark within that classification, already there you know there's there's money to be saved and so forth. But if you already have the other data, then zip files and so forth, that, that's how it works. So so you can either be very manual and some you know some organizations they just manually input the data into the system and then mm -hmm. they'll have an overview. But if you have other data, absolutely, then it's the connectivity and then having that happen. A lot of people collect the data, but they don't do anything with it. So if we've got, um, if we've got something there, uh, that would be really good oh, Good to know that we can link in with different types of, uh, different types of uh, systems that are out there. Absolutely. Just another one. Um, yes, I see Neil, Neil there is uh, looking to ask a question. I presume, would that be chat bar? Because we can't hear video or, or um, sorry, audio, can we? Fiona so I'll just have to if you could if you so Neil if you want to type away or is there there is a request to speak like come on there but again I don't know if it's enabled it sounds like it's not so Neil if you could just type that in we'll come back to that but in the meantime I have a, another question to, to keep things going in the meantime um it's looking with those that it's it's um it's how does it, does a system self learn? So if you've got a particular type of energy usage, um, does it look at it for something that's abnormal, or are there? Yeah. So if you, if if it's self learning, you could get. So well, that's what the standard curve is. Um, it's whether it, it it notices a difference, or are the parameters that can um, are the parameters that have to be put in from your company to say, well, this is what we think a standard usage would be, or, or how, how does it flag up the alarms, or how how's that side of it work? It, it, it's that's a very good question. What, what you could say is that one of the guidances from Denmark um, that we, we, I think, is very useful for everyone to read, we've done what we call a Raven review on space heating systems, but, but the experiences from Denmark, uh, they did all these tests back in the, 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 the um, 2005 and so forth. So, so what they've found, that the, probably the most important thing in terms of a heating system is essentially what you want is your heating system to just exactly supply the amount of heat every single heat emitter in the building should have and nothing more. That's what you need to do. And from that experience, or not experience, but therefore weather compensation is important, but the TRVs and everything would close off and therefore there wouldn't be. But what they found out is actually the energy consumption increased. And it's probably because TRVs, are, 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 they, they, they work, but they're, 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 they're not sort of magic and so forth. So, they're quite coarse control, aren't they? Well, yeah, it's yeah. exactly that. It's, it's like a, it's a crude sort of... Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, the absolute best thing is what you want, essentially, is a very well-balanced building, hydronically, mm -hmm. and then to, to have the lowest possible flow temperature at every single period of the year, that, that's what you're looking for. And then to sort of say, how will that work? Well, you can compare it because if your flow temperature results in too high a return temperature, or you can start saying, Are we, should we be monitoring the room temperatures in some parts of our building? Because if a building, if the room temperatures, that, that's the other rule of thumb in Denmark, is that if a room is one degree hotter than, than design, that adds approximately 7% to the energy bill. Yeah. So, so, so simply saying that all buildings and the Danes, I love the the, the expression. They say that, the, and this is the Dan, Danish national energy standard that it, the buildings have got to have satisfactory performance. They're not saying it's got to be opulent. They say satisfactory. So they say it's twenty one degrees is twenty one degrees with minimum energy wasted. So the focus is more on the men, in, energy wastage. Then, but again, it's a little bit of the farmer mentality. They don't like waste and so forth. So, but that's what it's about. So you find out it's actually a very few things. If you can minimize your flow temperature, you have done a hell of a lot. But if you have a poorly hydraulically balanced system, then maybe the system flow temperatures are too high. So, so it's that journey. Once you start and you realize, no, there is a problem in the building, then you might find out. But, but the standard response from energy data is 
don't go out and do anything other than 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 optimize the kit that you've got as you speak. And if you then discover that kit is not fit for purpose, then you have a new situation. But but try to get the existing to work. That's going to have the quickest impact and 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 and. Uh, Yep. And, and capital and time point of view. And last, just thinking of that, is it? I see this. Uh, Neil's got his question there, so we'll come to that in just a second. But but with those, um, and you as a company, with that information, do you help um, uh, interrogate and? And then the client has the information and yep. so forth. Then they have one step up on that. That if if uh, a meter or whatever stops communicating and the client doesn't do anything about it, then energy data will send one of their field servers and then you would charge. Because if you don't trust your data, if your mm. data feedback loop fails, then 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 you have a problem. And then they have the third tier, if you like. And and that's that's where they on a quarterly basis, then they have energy managers going through. So let's say a client, let's say a client's got five hundred buildings, then they'll say, okay, then then you'll do basically an energy audit. Mm -hmm. on the results because the information is made so that then an expert can drill down very quickly and then you'll have a face-to-face -face meeting with mm -hmm. let's say the financial and technical persons of a, a large uh, a local authority and then go through and sort of say but in the meantime and that's what i also like again is that if there's a, something that goes wrong a, a communication will go out to whoever is the facilities or service person on that given building and, and then they would also uh, request that it was confirmed that that was received. So, so you, you can almost get a situation where at the end of a quarter they say, well, we, we always send Bob information, but Bob never does anything about it. But is that type of a, like an audit where you say this part of the building, we have a, you know, that part of your portfolio, that there's room for improvement. But is that type of, a, of an energy audit? But we wouldn't be sitting all the time looking at things. Because Don't know, but it's the clients that have got to... Yep. to to really get into the groove. And but to say, you could offer it, you know, depending on what level of service they want. You could. And we mm -hmm. would help with the onboarding process. So we could say in initial stages, you know, this building is designed for a 30 degree Delta T. Okay, you set up a Delta T alarm. And when you get drift and that Delta T changes, then someone, this Bob, whoever it is, will, will get an email to say, okay, there's a problem. Um, so. It's a big part of the system is setting up alarms that will ensure people are being notified that there is a problem. Um, and, and Neil's question there about mm -hmm. you know, what happens, he's had excessive gas consumption and he thinks it might be um, having the windows open during COVID. That would be something where you could have set up an alarm for. Um, one, one experience they've had in Denmark a lot is that they've saved a hell of a lot of water because the, the system can pick up on water leaks. Um, so, firstly, they've detected a lot of leaks, and secondly, they've then prevented a lot of further damage from water leaks um, because the system has seen slightly excessive water consumption and sent an email to someone who's then gone, oh, my God, yeah, <laughs> shut that off. You know? um, they, they had one building they mentioned to us where it was delivering its water to a building next door. So sort of huge consumption of this building next door. They couldn't work out why. And it turned out the main in between the two had broken and it was just leaking water out into the ground. Um, and this has saved them, you know, things like that, saved them huge amounts on, in this example, uh, insurance for, for water damage because they detect it all very early. Um, and the same could be said, you know, these sort of alarms for, okay, if a TRV gets stuck open because, as you say, they are you know, pretty coarse if it's stuck, then it does. Then you've now taken it down to a different it could have been some capital expenditure but then at least you've, you're in a holding pattern so you can concentrate on other buildings otherwise you're looking the other way and then things will drift so it's it's it, they're the way that the, the energy data talk about the drift they talk about it like a garden you know because we started saying yeah but are people not then likely going to use the system and then they've learned a lot about what they need and then they'll stop using it but it says like a garden something's always going to be growing and things so it's a continuous trim that that is required all the time okay thank you um i'm not doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through at the moment but um, if anybody does want to email something through, I'm sure that uh, Lars or Jonathan will be more than willing to sort of answer anything and any inquiries on those. Um, 
but I think this is an area that where we sit at the moment that um, you know I personally I've been very interested in reducing carbon um, but again some of the other people the accountant side aren't quite have never been quite so interested in it but with the change in costs even if they drop down slightly, it's going to be a big driver, I feel, for monitoring this. And this is where the savings can be, can be made. That is, the systems are there, but they're just not controlled properly. So this energy gap, I think, is very important going forward. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, so I'd just like to say, again, Lars, thank you very much for that introduction on the system there. Um, I see, is that the um, the poll going out in a few minutes Um Fiona, or it will be on its way there. So if you could, uh, if you could, uh, yes, the poll's up there. I can see that going out there. That's brilliant. Um, so just from my side, it's just a, a few plugs for spaces. Um, we have a number of other, um, another uh, webinars coming through in October um, that uh, people can join. Um, and just to remember that if you're in a local authority, you can join spaces for free. So if you if you are a local authority, let all your other colleagues know so they can come along to these events that uh, you know, we try and get a help forward from Faithful and Gould. So I imagine that's what most people like to know. We'd love to do it. But how can we get the funding for it? Um, last little uh, last little um, plug at the moment is that we have our uh, the president's dinner and the award cer ceremony on uh, november the 3rd so uh, keep an eye out on the the uh, there will be emails and the, on the um on the uh, newsletters etc for that event or contact us if you'd be interested to come along to those um so i think that's it a little bit earlier or well, so we got 10 minutes yeah we had 10 minutes there but um left but uh, at least people can go have, i'm gonna have my lunch now but uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming along and uh, say yeah, don't forget to tell everybody, keep an eye out for the other webinars coming through. And if there's any questions, please, um, any further questions, please send them through to uh, to us. Then we can get those to Lars and Jonathan. OK, thank you very much and goodbye.